Hello friends, welcome to the world of Lean Six Sigma. I am Mohit Sharma, your mentor and coach on Lean Six Sigma issues and problems. Today I am going to talk about a concept called hypothesis testing. So I've read this concept in so many books and they make it so difficult that it is not easy to understand. So I am going to make this concept easy for you today. So what is hypothesis? It is a claim that we have to test. There is always an existing claim. For example, the existing claim says sun is hot and scientist wants to prove it otherwise. So the claim that they have to test the sun is otherwise is a hypothesis. So there are two types of hypothesis. One is called null hypothesis and the other one is called alternate hypothesis. So what is null hypothesis? It is currently accepted value of a parameter. For example, we are looking at the parameter of the population of India which says boys to girls ratio in India is 1000 to 900. So there is an already established fact which is called HO or null hypothesis. And then somebody wants to challenge that already existing fact. So they will come up with an alternate theory that they want to test, which is known as alternate hypothesis. This alternate hypothesis is also known as research hypothesis. Let us take an example to understand this better. In a manufacturing organization, there are two machines which are producing jam bottles with 200 grams of jam in them. The null hypothesis is that the machines are producing same weight of jam bottles. So the null hypothesis is mean weight of jam bottles of machine 1 is equal to mean weight of jam bottles of machine 2. But the alternate hypothesis is mean weight of jam bottles of machine 1 is not equal to mean weight of jam bottles of machine 2. Null and alternate hypothesis are always mathematically opposite statements. Then we have to test these hypotheses and the possible outcomes of these tests are we reject the null hypothesis or we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We do not prove anything to be true that is why we reject null hypothesis or we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We use the term statistically significant. What does this mean? It means where we draw a line to make a decision. Means when will we say that both the machines are not producing the same output. Take a sample of 50 jam bottles and measure their weight. On day 1, average weight of jam bottle from machine 1 is 200.1 grams and from machine 2 is 200.9 grams. They look so close but they are mathematically different. Next day, same sample of 50 jam bottles are measured from both machines. And average weight of jam bottle from machine 1 is 200.01 grams and for machine 2 is 210.04 grams. Third day the same activity is repeated and the average weight of jam bottles of machine 1 is 200.1 grams and for machine 2 is 270 grams. So when we look at the first result we are not very sure whether machine 2 is behaving differently. Second data set raises doubts. But the third data set conclusively suggests that the output of both the machines are different. This has to be statistically tested and for that we do hypothesis tests. Before we do hypothesis tests, we should learn few terms like level of confidence and level of significance. Level of confidence means how confident are we that the results we are showing are correct. So our level of confidence should be high like 95% or 99% and it is donated by the letter C. The level of significance is denoted by alpha and its value is 1 minus C. If the confidence is 95% then alpha is 0.05. The alpha is the maximum acceptable probability of being wrong if the alternate hypothesis is selected. So when we reject null hypothesis, p-value of the test should be less than 0.05 which indicate that the level of significance is less than 5% so we need to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we can say that our confidence is high on alternate hypothesis. When we fail to reject null hypothesis, p-value of the test should be greater than 0.05. Now let us understand how to select a hypothesis test. Hypothesis tests depend upon the type of data that we are working with. In hypothesis tests, we have project y and x. Our y could be continuous or discrete and our x could also be continuous and discrete. When the y is continuous and x is also continuous, we use simple linear regression. 
When the y is discrete and x is continuous, we use logistic regression. Continuous y could be normal or non-normal. When the y is normally distributed, we will compare the means. And when y is non-normally distributed, we will compare the medians. The x can also have one variable, two variables or more than two variables. When the y is continuous, normal and x is discrete and has one variable, we will use one sample t-test. And for the same conditions, when y is non-normal, we will use one sample Wilcoxon test. And when y is discrete and x is also discrete, we will use one p-test. When x is discrete and has two variables, we will use two t-test for y normal. We will use Mann-Whitney test for y non-normal. And we will use two p-test for x discrete. When x has two or more than two variables, we will use ANOVA test for y normal, Moore's median test for y non normal, and chi square test for y discrete. We also have to compare the variance. To compare the variance, we will use homogeneity of variance test when y is continuous and x is discrete. Let us go to Minitab and see how these tests are performed. The first test that we are going to learn today is when our y is continuous and our x is also continuous, the test is simple linear regression. So I have cycle time data in column C1 and tenure of the person processing these transactions in column C3. Tenure is also continuous and cycle time is also continuous. So let us see how we perform regression test. We are going to perform a fitted line plot, stat, regression and fitted line plot, click OK. Under response, we will select cycle time. Under predictor, we will select tenure. Double click on it to select. Click OK. So if you look at this graph, it suggests R square adjusted value of 91.9%, which means there is a strong significant relationship between tenure and cycle time. When the tenure increases, cycle time to process the transactions goes down. So it is a significantly contributing factor. Let's learn the second hypothesis test, which is when our y is continuous and our x is discrete. The first thing that we need to check whether our y is normally distributed or non-normally distributed. Stat, basic statistics and graphical summary. Under variables, we will select cycle time. So cycle time is our project Y. And then we will select OK. P-value of greater than 0.05 suggests that data is normally distributed. So now, when your Y is continuous and normal and your X is discrete and has two or more than two variables, we will use one-way ANOVA test. So let us see how to perform one-way ANOVA test. So we will go to STAT ANOVA one-way. In response, we will enter cycle time. And in factor, we will enter city. And we will click OK. If you look at this p-value, which is less than 0.05, which suggests that we reject null hypothesis, which means we are going ahead with alternate hypothesis. The alternate hypothesis here is that the average cycle time of each city is different. So let us look at what is the average cycle time of Delhi and Hyderabad and are they different? The mean time of Delhi is 4.79 and the mean time of Hyderabad is 3.28. It means Hyderabad is taking lesser cycle time to process transactions than Delhi teams and they are statistically significant. So whatever are the best practices in the Hyderabad team should be implemented in Delhi team. So the next tool that we are going to learn is when your Y is continuous and non-normal and the X is discrete, we use Moods median test. So let's learn what is Moods median test. For that, I am going to use the data set C5, which is again a cycle time data. It has to be compared whether documented processes are taking lesser time or where the documents are not available in the process are taking more time or not. So the alternate hypothesis is that 
if there are no documents it will take more time to process the transaction so let's test this hypothesis first thing that we have to check is whether y is non normally distributed or not stat basic statistics and graphical summary under variable select cycle time 1 and click okay the p value of less than 0.05 suggests that it is non normally distributed so we will perform modes median test stat non parametric test and modes median test under response select cycle time 1 and under factor select documented process available and click okay p value of 0.000 which is less than 0.05 suggests that it is a significantly contributing factor here the medians would be compared if you look at the median cycle time when the process document is available is 2.8 and the median cycle time when the process document is not available is 11.07 which indicates that the alternate hypothesis is correct and the next hypothesis test that we are going to learn is when the y is discrete and your x is also discrete and has two or more than two variables so i have a discrete y in column c9 which says whether the transaction is a defect or a non defect transaction it is a discrete type of data and the shift which we have to test whether morning shift or evening shift is having the similar kind of defect ratio or not or whether they are statistically different or not stat tables and chi square test for association under rows we will enter column c9 and under columns we will select c10 which is shift and we will click okay p value indicate that shift is a contributing factor to defects if we look at the evening shift the expected number of defects are 6.795 and the team is only making zero defects it means evening shift is performing better than the morning shift morning shift was supposed to create 6.2 defects but they are producing 13 defects hence whatever are the best practices of the evening shift should be replicated to morning shift so friends with that i am closing this video as you know hypothesis testing is a very huge concept and for the purpose of this video i am stopping it here i cannot teach you the entire concepts in this one video i will come up with another video on hypothesis test where i'll be explaining all the other hypothesis tests that we have to perform if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends i will see you in my next upcoming video till then take care bye bye